Hey guys, it's me again. I'm coming on. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a different, uh, uh, so usually I'm down in my basement, but like I said, I'm doing construction uh, so that I could rent it out. And funny enough, I got a message today that the people that wanted to rent the apartment are not going to be taking it. And it's kind of cool because I had actually tried to give this place away for a lot cheaper to them. And now I guess I can charge more once everything is done. But hey, so I was coming up here and I was going to start fixing up things here. But that's besides the point. Just seeing what's up, seeing how you guys are doing. Uh, but the topic I'm, ta I'm talking about today is because of, like I said, when situations happen to me, I think like there's, a, you know, a, like there's an underlying reason that I start seeing the same types of things. And I start to talk about it. So if you did see my last videos, I was saying how we're in this new energy, new wave of abundance. I feel like an old, like we're shedding that skin. We're moving into something new. We're reaping new newness all around. And I really started thinking about some things that I've been seeing in my session work. And I've been seeing with friends of mine. Because I've done some sessions and I have a couple friends of mine that are looking to me for advice. And I'm basically starting to see that there's a pattern that those that are expanding their minds right now, those that are coming on to consciousness and what it means, are in relationships and they're contemplating if they're the A, the right relationships, am I in a karmic relationship or am I a pond? And I'll just describe what these three things are. And these uh, types of things maybe would have helped me in my last relationship had I had known them. Like... Not only was my last relation karmic, it was actually at the ending of this cycle, was also at the same time of the ending of our human cycle in a sense of rebirth, that it was like, it was just the right time and the right place. And my ex, like I said, had turned into a narcissist, so it was very easy to determine that I was in the wrong relationship. But not all of us are with these narcissists, and we don't have those true definers. But the thing is, is that now that I know what they are, I did realize that in my last relationship, those were showcasing to me and I wasn't paying attention to them. So much like you guys, I wanted to give this advice because I felt like it was very useful for those at large, male or female. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if it's for a relationship with a family member or a friend, or it doesn't matter if it's in your career. This will apply in the same way too. So back to my last video when I was saying like we're in this new abundant era which may be bringing forth more love because obviously as we raise in consciousness we're going to be able to absorb different and larger scales of what it means to flow through the love space that is our creator. So I wanted to talk about how you define if you're in a karmic relationship, if you're in a stagnant relationship or if, or if you're just a pawn. So what I mean by karmic um, I had these factors showing before the narcissist showed up. So I want to say this to you. How I knew that I was in a karmic relationship in hindsight, and I think if you're in your relationship right now and you're trying to figure this out, you can always look back at this and then do your skills. Are you in a relationship where you're either your feminine or your masculine energy? One of the two is being repressed. Okay. The reason why I'm seeing this is because even in my relationship before my ex showed his face, I was always repressing my feminine energy all the time. I couldn't really be soft. I couldn't really show a lot of emotion. I couldn't really, you know, just be myself, be held. I was always in this masculine energy of doing, of achieving, of logic of uh, reason and I say this because like even though my ex was making a lot of money I was always the one that was like making maneuvers I was always making sure the bills were paid I was always making sure that everything was stable everything was moving forward accordingly I was always trying to make things happen so I never got to be in my feminine energy which is just to like release and to receive or if it's just like sheer out intuition letting that you know those feminine juices percolate in a sense and also at the same time too, I wasn't receiving and I wasn't just being. So those are feminine qualities and I'm probably going to list them out on the side that you should realize that both male and females need this balance of this type of these energies. Okay. So if you're in a relationship where either your masculine or your feminine is not being met, I would say that if you're tilting to one side or the other, you're most likely in a karmic relationship. Now, Karmic relationships can be really puzzling. And the reason why I say this is because much like a 
soulmates or if you prescribe to the whole twin flame thing or divine partner idea you can kind of decide that something you're in might be karmic if certain factors kind of show their ugly heads and what i mean by that is like you most likely won't be growing with the person you're with if they're karmic and you probably met them and it was love at first sight and that kind of captivated you and you're like, oh, like those types of relationships don't come by very often where you just meet and you're just like head over heels and, you know, you might have a lusty side to things, but at the same time you're on an emotional roller coaster and things aren't very stable in this relationship. That's another factor, emotional roller coaster. And you just don't have a sense of confidence because there's a lot of codependency that is formulating in a karmic relationship. And what I mean by uh, codependency is like there's this push and pull and push and pull and push and pull happening all the time. And a karmic relationship is the best at that because you're constantly um, at, at odds with who you are. So you're constantly doing this back and forth, back and forth. Now, when it turns into the idea of like being with what they call a soulmate or the proper uh, person you're supposed to be with, you should be doing things where you strive together. Your masculine and feminine energy are balanced within the relationship, within yourself. And if you are striving for more with the person, you can be yourself and then still get more and go for bigger together. That's a clear definer that you're probably with the person you're supposed to be with, aka a soulmate, aka a divine partner, aka a twin flame, whatever the case or whatever you prescribe to. And again, please do not listen to everything I'm saying. Always listen to your solar plexus, your gut, your heart. Is if I'm saying the correct things, please, please, please always be the discerner of everything. You should be best brought forward if you're in the relationship, the right relationship, especially at this time. Because right now, a lot of us are either in hermit mode or we're in a relationship or we're contemplating getting out of a relationship. So if you are in this state where you feel like you're going to be acquiring, now why I say that this can go back to careers, to family and friends, if you can, I put them up and I'm sure if you can find those qualities and you can define them, you can now stabilize and mentally say, yes, I'm either in this or I'm either in that. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about was also when I came to say that if you are in a stagnant relationship, meaning that there's no growth, that might be a clear indicator that you are not in your masculine feminine energy enough and you're not balancing so if you're in a stagnant relationship that's not going like for example one of my girlfriends that was talking to me she's been in a, a almost nine year relationship and there's no wedding there's no kids there's no nothing and she's just like letting all of her time and effort go with not really reaping what she truly wants inside so the thing i would say to that person it could be man or woman again if you're not getting exactly what you want out of this relationship and it's been that long and it's just stagnant, okay? That's a clear indication that you, uh, you probably have to cut that cord and move on. And trust me, as we get older, that is a scary factor because a lot of people stay in relationships because they don't wanna be alone, because it makes sense business-wise, because it's, it's there. Some people, that's a really big factor. And the last relationship I wanted to talk about was one that is even more perplexing to figure out and if you need to cut a cord let's say and move forward or not is what we call the pond relationship or what i call the pond relationship i made this up a couple days ago in my mind and i was like yeah that makes sense so i'm going to call this the pond relationship the pond relationship is one where if you look at a pond it's a beautiful mass of water truly it's full of life it's full of growth so much unlike the stagnant relationship, things are percolating, things are growing. But the thing about the pond relationship is that it's got cool, cool, glassy water. It's very tranquil. It is bringing forth a lot of microbial action. Ergo, why a formulation of scum and algae are allowed to thrive in a very calm pond. Now, the thing is, is that when I go back to this in terms of what I was saying about masculine and feminine is because let's say, for example, you're somebody who doesn't want to establish themselves in a pond. 
if they are, you know, mentally and thinking forward and they're like, oh, you know, like I, I'm kind of bored in this state that I'm in. And if you are in this positive relationship, most likely you're not really seeing that anything's going wrong. You're not seeing that anything's going right. You're basically just telling yourself like, oh, it's okay. And the person I'm with is not doing anything truly wrong. So in those cases where the person's not doing anything wrong, you're figuring out like, oh, maybe this is, you know, this is okay because there's nothing presently wrong with this situation. But the thing is, is that inside you want to be a river or an ocean. If you are in a pond situation, you have to realize with, with the trajectory of where we're going mission wise, and I am probably just proclaiming to the empaths, the star seeds, the 144 right now, and maybe to those that are coming on and enlivening and awakening and taking heed to the call as well. It's that if you stay in this pond that is growing, but your heart is telling you that you want to be a river or an ocean, eventually you're going to go off kilter. You're going to lose on one of those masculine feminine energy qualities, and you're going to end up suffering in the long run. So if you can establish if you're in a pond and you're not, you have to make that decision. Sometimes flip a coin. I think it's the best way sometimes is you say to one side of that coin that you want to like stay in a pond and the other side says like go be an ocean and a, and a river. And if you flip that coin and the coin and where it lands does not irk you in any way, like let's say it says pond and you're like relieved by that stay where you are. But if you flip that coin and it says stay a pond and your stomach's like, oh, I don't know if I could do this, you're most likely wanting to be a river or an ocean. So use that. And if you see that you're getting that irking feeling, you're going to go off kilter because it's not your true want or desire. So you have to think about those things because right now, if you are like, let's say even single like me, I... I'm totally cool with what's going on now. I can honestly thrive doing what I'm doing the way it is right now. Am I, like I said, I'm still working on my shadow work from the past video so that I can be in a place where I can work on my feminine enough in a sense to receive, to feel like I'm, I'm good enough for whatever is to come should it come. But I'll be honest, I'm in a state where I'm in a, I'm kind of like in a pond, but as a single person. <laughs> Cause I've got a lot of life and things going on, but at the same time, I'm like, no, I kind of want to be an ocean or a river. And I sort of feel like that would come with like establishing more of a, a bigger base or a bigger bond with someone else. But I'm like, I'm totally having a good time being a pond as a single person. But I hope this helps because I've been seeing people that I have in my sessions. I've been seeing friends of mine coming to me with these situations. So I felt like that with the information that I have provided everything I went through in these last two years, I know a lot about karmics. I know a lot about narcissists. I know a lot about, you know, being in different relationships where I've been a pond and or I've been stagnant. So I hope this helps. We are in a time where things are converging, things are changing, things are elevating, and you might need to make these decisions now. And the reason why I also say that too is a lot of people might be like, oh, you know, Ashley, I've been in these relationships and I've been building and building and building. Figure out which one you are. But at the same time, you shouldn't also be scared of letting everything go because I was somebody who lived on that trajectory, always thinking to myself, oh, I just spent 10 years doing this last thing and I tried to build myself to this level at this time. We all tell ourselves those stories. But what I will say is that unlike me, like I got the rug ripped right under my feet. So I didn't have any other choice but to propel myself forward away from my ex. But let's say, for example, you're a woman or a man who has put a lot of work into what they've done in the last 10 years. And you're like, I really don't want to do this because of all the work I've done much like a career, much like family and friends too. And the thing is, is that what I will say is in this time that we're moving forward into the next wave of existence, everything that does not suit you, that you will have to carry, do you want to carry into the next situation? You may have to shed. So this is why I'm bringing this video up as well. It may be scary to let go of everything, but I will let you know that as someone who's done it, it's one of the most freeing feelings because I get to start from square one. I get to build the life that I want to see for myself going forward in this new existence that we're all trying to adopt as a consciousness and as a people of this planet. So don't be scared to do those things because sometimes you can rebuild better. 
And at the same time, if you are with the right person, you can rebuild and reshape something even better than you could alone. So I just want to say that if you do like what I'm saying, please like, please share, please subscribe. I love you lots. Have a good one. Great weekend. Bye. Hey guys, it's me again. I'm coming on. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a different, uh, uh, so usually I'm down in my basement, but like I said, I'm doing construction uh, so that I could rent it out. And funny enough, I got a message today that the people that wanted to rent the apartment are not going to be taking it. And it's kind of cool because I had actually tried to give this place away for a lot cheaper to them. And now I guess I can charge more once everything is done. But hey, so I was coming up here and I was going to start fixing up things here. But that's besides the point. Just seeing what's up, seeing how you guys are doing. Uh, but the topic I'm, ta I'm talking about today is because of, like I said, when situations happen to me, I think like there's, a, you know, a, like there's an underlying reason that I start seeing the same types of things. And I start to talk about it. So if you did see my last videos, I was saying how we're in this new energy, new wave of abundance. I feel like an old, like we're shedding that skin. We're moving into something new. We're reaping new newness all around. And I really started thinking about some things that I've been seeing in my session work. And I've been seeing with friends of mine. Because I've done some sessions and I have a couple friends of mine that are looking to me for advice. And I'm basically starting to see that there's a pattern that those that are expanding their minds right now, those that are coming on to consciousness and what it means, are in relationships and they're contemplating if they're the A, the right relationships, am I in a karmic relationship or am I a pond? And I'll just describe what these three things are. And these uh, types of things maybe would have helped me in my last relationship had I known them. Like... Not only was my last relation karmic, it was actually at the ending of this cycle, was also at the same time of the ending of our human cycle in a sense of rebirth, that it was like, it was just the right time and the right place. And my ex, like I said, had turned into a narcissist, so it was very easy to determine that I was in the wrong relationship. But not all of us are with these narcissists, and we don't have those true definers. But the thing is, is that now that I know what they are, I did realize that in my last relationship, those were showcasing to me and I wasn't paying attention to them. So much like you guys, I wanted to give this advice because I felt like it was very useful for those at large, male or female. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if it's for a relationship with a family member or a friend, or it doesn't matter if it's in your career. This will apply in the same way too. So back to my last video when I was saying like we're in this new abundant era which may be bringing forth more love because obviously as we raise in consciousness we're going to be able to absorb different and larger scales of what it means to flow through the love space that is our creator. So I wanted to talk about how you define if you're in a karmic relationship, if you're in a stagnant relationship or if, or if you're just a pawn. So what I mean by karmic um, I had these factors showing before the narcissist showed up. So I want to say this to you. How I knew that I was in a karmic relationship in hindsight, and I think if you're in your relationship right now and you're trying to figure this out, you can always look back at this and then do your skills. Are you in a relationship where you're either your feminine or your masculine energy? One of the two is being repressed. Okay. The reason why I'm seeing this is because even in my relationship before my ex showed his face, I was always repressing my feminine energy all the time. I couldn't really be soft. I couldn't really show a lot of emotion. I couldn't really, you know, just be myself, be held. I was always in this masculine energy of doing, of achieving, of logic of uh, reason and I say this because like even though my ex was making a lot of money I was always the one that was like making maneuvers I was always making sure the bills were paid I was always making sure that everything was stable everything was moving forward accordingly I was always trying to make things happen so I never got to be in my feminine energy which is just to like release and to receive or if it's just like sheer out intuition letting that you know those feminine juices percolate in a sense and also at the same time too, I wasn't receiving and I wasn't just being. So those are feminine qualities and I'm probably going to list them out on the side that you should realize that both male and females need this balance of this type of these energies. Okay. So if you're in a relationship where 
either your masculine or your feminine is not being met. I would say that if you're tilting to one side or the other, you're most likely in a karmic relationship. Now, karmic relationships can be really puzzling. And the reason why I say this is 